Hello and welcome to this first video on pandas, not just about what it is, but how to actually use it. In this video, we're going to be covering uh, part two of my textbook on pandas, which you can find here, and we're going to be kind of going through this entire chapter. And by the end of this lesson, you should have a good understanding of exactly how to implement pandas in a workflow in Python. Now, I'm going to be doing live coding, but I'm going to follow along precisely with each section of this textbook. And I'm going to be posting this video at the very bottom of the textbook. So if you're working on it, you can actually kind of just scroll up and see each of these steps along the way and kind of scroll back and forth between the video and the actual textbook all within the same page. So let's go ahead and jump right in. In the last video, we talked about how to install pandas, and hopefully you've already done that. If you haven't, go back and do that and follow the lessons. It's a simple pip install. In the last video, I made the mistake of saying that I'm working with pandas uh, 1.15. That was a mistake. I'm working with pandas 1.3.2. So that's 1.3.2. I'm going to go ahead and comment this out right here so that you can kind of see that as we kind of move down. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see a bit better. Now that you've got pandas installed, you're going to import pandas as PD. If you remember in the last video, I mentioned that this is how you import pandas always as PD. It is the Pythonic way to do it. So the standard way that everyone is going to do it across all disciplines. So let's go ahead and execute that cell. And if you're not familiar with Jupyter Notebooks, each of these things is a cell that can be executed as standalone code. And then you can kind of, that data is all kind of stored in memory so that you can call it in a different cell. It's no different than, a, than an IDE, except for that one major change. And you can insert um, Markdown and other things in it. It's a little bit more advanced, and it's good for this kind of a lesson. So in the textbook, I have a very simple dictionary that I will be copying and pasting in right here. Um, it's going to be available onto the textbook. You can just copy and paste it yourself. And this is a dictionary. This is an example of a data set that we're going to be working with. In this case, we have names underscore dict. Now, this dictionary has one key, and that's going to be names. And that key is, think of it in Excel terms as a, a column. So this is the names column. Everything that comes in the list that is the value of that key, everything that's in the list are each of the rows for that column. So in this case, we have a data set, an Excel spreadsheet, that has one column, names, and one, two, three, four, five, six, six different rows corresponding to that name. Now a data set, an Excel, uh, can have multiple columns. And if this were the way you were structuring your data, you would have multiple uh, keys within your uh, within your dictionary. So we could have names, we could have ages, and we're going to see much more advanced and sophisticated data sets as we move forward, including some real world ones. So let's execute that cell. And now what you have is names underscore dict stored into memory. So let's try something that we would be more familiar with. Let's try to print off all of the different names that correspond to the key of names. We can do that by saying names underscore dict, and it, since it's a dictionary, we can call a specific key by using the brackets and saying which key we want to call, in this case, names. We print that off, and we have the corresponding value, which is a list, in this case, the list of all the names. That should be fairly straightforward. This is, this is kind of dictionaries 101. If you're not familiar with that, that's fine. You don't really need to know about that going forward, but I encourage you to check out my video on dictionaries, which... I'll provide a link for in the description down below. Let's go ahead and move forward because this is a video about pandas, about data frames. Remember, a data frame is a Python object, it's a panda object, that has a lot of power behind it. Essentially, at its core, it's kind of like an entire Excel spreadsheet, but it comes with a lot of functions and methods that you can perform on it that are different from Excel. So let's go ahead and make our first data frame. In Python, you're always going to say DF as a standard data frame. As you work with multiple data frames, as you work with um, kind of mutating data frames to create new ones from old ones, you're going to have different object names. Sometimes you're going to have new underscore DF. Sometimes you'll have a specific name like names underscore DF. But really, DF should always be in your object name so that the a person reading your code will understand later on in your code that that object is a data frame. But if you're just working with a single data frame, always call it DF. It's just a good standard to abide by. And you're going to say PD dot capital D-A-T-A, -A, so capital D for data, 
and then capital F frame. So you're going to capitalize both the D and the F here. And for right now, we're just going to pass in a single object. And that's going to be our names underscore dict. So a dictionary that's got a key that has a corresponding list. And we're going to execute that cell. Now we don't see anything happen yet, but we're working in Jupyter Notebook. So we can now look at our data frame. So let's go ahead and do that by just typing in DF. And we see that we actually have that. And this looks a lot like an Excel spreadsheet, right? You've got your names up here, the column, you've got the line underneath it, and then you've got the series of names that correspond to that title, to that label. And then over here on the left, you have a series of numbers. In a data frame, this is called your index. If you're working within an IDE, you're not going to be able to use just DF. You're going to have to say something like print DF. And it's going to look something like this. Now, this doesn't look as pretty, at least not to me. If you're working with pandas and you're kind of starting out, I really recommend playing with pandas within a Jupyter notebook for this one reason. You can look at your data frame a lot more uh, nicely. There are ways to do this within an IDE, but Jupyter notebooks do this off the shelf. So that's kind of nice. So that's how you display a data frame. It's not too difficult. Play around with it, try to print it off different ways, and then kind of pop back to this video. So once you have a data frame, you're oftentimes going to have to save it in some capacity. There's a couple different ways that we can do this. So let's just work with kind of the, the standard one that you're going to see probably on day one. It's going to be how to save a data frame to a CSV file or a comma separated value file. This is a file that's very specifically structured. Every comma delineates a change in some kind of data structure. So you'll see what I mean in just a second. Let's go ahead and try and do this. So we're going to use the command df.2 underscore csv and we're going to pass in one argument for right now we're going to pass in the argument of data backslash names dot csv if you don't have a data subfolder created go ahead and create one now there's ways to automate that but we're not going to get into that we're just focused on the basics so go ahead and create a data subfolder and then you're just going to execute the cell it's going to be problematic to do things this way and you're going to see why in just a second because now we're going to talk about how to read that file that we just saved. So let's call this df2. This is going to be a new object. We're going to try to read that CSV file that we just saved. So we can do in, um, in pandas pd.read underscore CSV. And we can pass in this exact same name. So a string of data backslash names, names dot CSV. And now we've got a new object in memory. Let's go ahead and see what that object looks like. Oh no, <laughs> we've got a horrible, horrible problem. This looks nothing like what I saved up here. And there's a very important reason for this. This is a good to, to learn, I think. This mistake is a very common one if you're just starting off with pandas, and it's a very easy one to solve. So we've got a data frame that's got this unnamed colon zero. What pandas has done for us, which is actually a good thing, is we haven't told it what column is our index. And so it's presuming that there isn't one, so it needs to make one. And so what it's done for us, it's kindly made for us a, a new CSV file with an index that it created. But you notice that it's the exact same thing as the, the standard index that it's already given us. This is a, one of those little problems that you can easily solve if you just know how to do it. So let's look into how to do it. Let's go back to that df.2csv function. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to say data backslash names dot CSV. And remember, we have got, let's go ahead and just demonstrate real quick that DF is still the exact same object. So as you can tell, it's still the same object. We're going to pass one other keyword argument. We're going to say index is equal to false. And now we can open up, let's open up DF3 just to kind of demonstrate that this again is a new object. And uh, let's go ahead and actually call this something else. We're going to call this names underscore no index, just so we can kind of distinguish between the, the two different files. So we're going to say df3 is equal to two uh, pd dot read underscore csv. And we're going to read in data backslash names no index dot csv. Let's go ahead and read that in. And let's print that off. And notice now, 
that because I passed this keyword argument of index is equal to false, we've gotten rid of that index. This is going to be a problem that I promise you, um, if you don't know about it, it will surface, it'll bother you, you'll spend about five to 10 minutes looking it up on Stack Overflow and then finally find the solution. Here you can just know the solution right out of the gate. There are times when you're going to want to um, have an index, so you'll not want to pass this keyword argument, but when you're starting out, chances are you probably don't. We're going to talk about indexes, indices, more in a future video. But for right now, I want to talk about kind of some other things that we might want to be doing within Pandas. So another common way that we might want to save our data is as a JSON file or JavaScript object notation. It's spelled J-S-O-N. That's how you'll always see it, spelt in syntax. But let's go ahead and try to make one. So we're going to take our DF3 object, since we know it's formatted nicely, and we're going to say dot two underscore JSON, all lowercase here. And we're going to say data backslash names dot JSON. And that's it. For a JSON file, you don't need to pass the keyword argument of index equals false. It's not going to be stored with one. So let's go ahead and execute that. And now let's try to load it up. We're going to make a new object. And we're going to say uh, DF4 is going to be equal to PD dot read JSON. This is how you read in a JSON file. And this is important to know because a lot of the time in the digital humanities, your data is going to come in a few different ways. It'll be in Excel. It'll be like a, an XLSX um, file. It'll be in a CSV file. It'll be a JSON file. It might be even in an XML file. So it's good to be familiar with these different ways to load in data. So we're going to say read JSON, and we're going to pass in the argument of a string, and it's going to be the file that we want to actually read. So let's go ahead and print that off. And we notice that we have DF4, which we just created, is now printing off exactly as we would expect. So this is how you kind of add in or read in a JSON file. Let's talk about another common thing that you're going to have to do. A lot of the times when you're working with data, this is true for all, all sectors, from data science problems to machine learning projects to digital humanities projects, you're going to have to take in data from multiple sources and kind of concatenate or bring that data together. Let's presume under this example that we've gotten the names from one source and we got their ages from another source. And now we have to bring these two columns together so they're in one data frame. So let's work with DF4, our fourth data frame object here. What we can do is we can think of, think of this as kind of like a, a dictionary of sorts, right? So we can pass in a new key, let's call this ages, and we're going to make that equal to a list of numbers which are going to be the ages that correspond to each of these individuals, Tom, Mary, Jeff, Rose, Stephanie, and Roger. So let's go ahead and execute that. And now, oh, I did it wrong. DF4, there we go. Let's print off DF4. And we see that we actually have all the ages now kind of corresponding with DF4. If we were to try to do this with, with six names, we would immediately have a problem. In fact, Let's go ahead and try to do that right now, just so you can kind of see what that problem would be. So again, we're going to load up DF4. So it's erased DF4 from memory, and it's replaced it with that fresh one. Let's add in an extra number right here. We're going to call it 53. Why not? And we get a value error. If you go through and read, you'll find out that our length of our list, which is 7, doesn't match the length of our other column or columns, which is only 6. So that's why you have to always make sure that these two align. Now, there are ways to handle missing data, but we're not there yet. So let's go ahead and just make sure our data frame is structured the right way, and it looks like it is. Now, Pandas isn't just good for displaying tabular data. If it were, you would just use Excel. It does a lot more. It allows for you to actually manipulate, grab, and kind of examine and analyze all that data. But behind that, you have to know how to grab the data. We're going to talk a lot about how to filter out, grab, group, all these other advanced methods on data. For right now, Let's again focus on the big basics. Let's try to grab just the names from our data set. So we only want to grab this names column. We're going to focus on grabbing one column. We've got a couple different ways that we can do this. Let's create an object called names. We're going to make that equal to df4.names. And now I can print off, let's just do names for right now. Print off names, there we go. You can see all the different names listed out that way. We can do the same thing with ages. Let's go ages is equal to df4.ages. We can print off ages. And you see all the ages. You can access different columns by using dot whatever the name is. If it's capitalized, you'll use a capital letter here. 
Um, again, we're going to talk about this a lot more as we kind of move forward, but that's how you essentially grab a, a single column in pandas. Sometimes, however, you're going to need to convert that column into a list. And there's a lot of different reasons for this. Um, lists tend to be a little bit more computationally inexpensive. Um, they're also sometimes necessary to work with in loops. But you're going to find a time where that column needs to be a list. You can't iterate over a column as easily. You can by doing uh, a different thing, which we're going to look at in the future. Uh, but a lot of the times, you're going to want to iterate over the data as a list. So let's look at how to convert that column into a list. So we're going to call this ages underscore list, and that's going to be equal to d, um, df4 dot ages. And we're going to use another special method here. We're going to say dot to list with no arguments. And let's go ahead and print that off. So we're going to print off ages underscore list. And we have our data now as a list that we can now start to play with, manipulate, and analyze. Let's say we wanted to do one more thing. And then we're going to kind of wrap up this video. Let's say that we were interested in grabbing a very specific row in a data frame. So not a column. Uh, we want to grab a whole row across the list. So one of the things that we can do is we can use this. Um, I think it stands for item location. Location. I can never remember what iLock stands for, but we're going to use something called iLock. So I'm going to comment this out, iLock. Very common uh, method that you need to be familiar with because you're going to use this time and again. Let's say we want to grab row one. We're going to make that equal to df4.iloc. And this is going to take uh, the brackets after it. And this is going to take an integer. So which is the uh, location? So which is the row that you want to grab? So let's say I want to grab row one. I can do that. And we're going to print off. Let's just do this. And then new cell, we're going to print off row one. And we see that we've got Mary age 26. So we were able to actually go in and grab row one using iLock. If we go up, we see that Mary is in fact in row one. If we were to grab row zero, it would have grabbed us Tom. So this is how you use iLock to examine a specific row within your data set. And this is how you can kind of iterate over your data set using iLock. We're going to get to that in a future video. For right now, though, you've gotten a lot of kind of the basics of pandas. Uh, the very basic elements that you have to know in order to start working with data, how to create a data set, save a data set, load a data set from CSV or JSON file. You've gotten a sense of how to grab a specific column and a specific row. And you've gotten also a sense of how to convert a column to a list. If you've gotten all this, you're OK to move forward. I do, however, encourage you to play around with these basics moving forward because we're going to be uh, kind of building upon these in the next few videos as we start working with data in more, um, in more specific ways. So in the next few videos, we're going to be talking about um, everything from finding data in a data frame to organizing data to cleaning data. And this is going to be kind of the, the fundamentals of working with data within Pandas. Um, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below. And as always, I sincerely thank all of my Patreon supporters. If you get a lot out of this channel, please do consider supporting it. I take all the income from, from Patreon, and I use it to keep this channel alive, buy better equipment for the channel, or buy a different server space for the channel, and uh, continue to put out these uh, Jupyter books so that you have a good frame of reference kind of for every kind of series on this channel. Thanks for listening, and have a great day.